Hey buddies, welcome to Mass Games. My name is Simon and today I'm doing how to set up, play and review for the game Doppelkopf. Now, you might have seen me use uh, this pack of cards before. That's because this is a game involving two decks, ideally the same background. Of course, you'll need to sort them out afterwards. I'll be mainly just using a single deck and I'll refer to that in a moment. So this is the German card game from 1895. It's uh, regarded as relatively complex and I'll give you some examples of actually games which are much simpler than that afterwards. But it's a game involving you're trying to get the most points. You're playing a number of rounds and ultimately you are looking to gain the most points for your team. Your teammate you do not know <clears throat> Excuse me, at the start of the game. And let's just talk about the cards that you have and then what you work with them. So all of these cards are going to be removed. Some games have the 9 in it. Just to make it easier, I will not be talking about the 9 variant. So what cards do we have? Well, they all have a value and all have a rank of precedence. So if someone places an ace, it is uh, not the highest value card. You're going to have the 10 and then finally the king above it. Now, again, you may well play it the other way around, but that is how I've been taught it two different ways uh, by two different uh, sets of people. By all means, you can play it as you wish. It may well be the ace is the higher. I have also played the ace is the higher, okay? And because most people regard ace the higher, that might even be easier for people to understand. Either way, these are not trick cards. These are the cards that you're playing and you... Um, like other games, you may have seen the game Seagull on the channel yesterday, which went out. And ultimately, you're going to have cards which have a lot of points, such as these, and cards which you'll um, have less value, but more likely to win tricks, is that kind of a game. So those are the initial cards that you have. And now we're going to move on to the other cards. And then I'll tell you about what these points are worth for each of the cards, and then how you'd score it up, etc. Whilst I'm setting this up, please ensure that you've uh, liked the channel. Funny enough, there's a person who, I don't know who, but happened to uh, thumb down a video on my top 10 solo plays. I have no idea why they did that, unless you give me a comment. So please, of course, give me a comment. Let me know what your thoughts are on all the videos. Of course, subscribe for all further videos as well. And lastly, check out the description for links through to 2,200 photographs you can follow on Instagram. And of course, support the channel via Patreon. So what cards do we have here? Well, we have all the Trump cards again. It's not easy to grab and grasp the first time we look at it, because of course, how do you tell these are trump cards? The best way is either to photograph this, as I did, or as somebody else kindly did, they made me a little list to show you exactly how they work. So all these cards are standard cards, and I'll show you an example hand in a moment. All of these cards are going to be ascending order of value for trying winning a trick. So for example, someone plays the king of hearts, then you must follow suit. If someone else has got the ace, or the 10, then you must follow that as well. And of course, if uh, you can't then follow, you must play a trump card. You must play one of these cards. Why do that? Well, you're then going to win that hand. Winning that hand is going to give you some points. Now let's talk about points. Okay, so starting off with the ace, if you have one of these in your hand, when you win it at the end, when you total up points, you're scoring yourself and your teammate 11 victory points. If you happen to have uh, the king, well, that's going to score you four victory points. The queen or the dame, it might be have a D on the cards that you have, that's going to score you three, and the jack is going to score you two victory points. The ten are going to score you ten victory points, that's make it quite easy. And as you can see, all of the diamonds, they are all trick cards, okay? So no diamonds in the regular set of nine cards here, and that, of course, is the highest card in the game. Anyone plays that is guaranteed to win the trick. So let's shuffle this up and see how we get on. And uh, before you do that, Let's just talk about some other things in this game. So uh, there's there's a lot to uh, obviously explain and lots of variants and stuff. I'm just trying to keep this as simple as possible so you can hopefully see if this is for you. This is a special card. Remember, there's two decks of all these cards. There's eight cards, obviously, for, um, for, for hearts and all the rest. And if uh, you are trying to find your partner who also has this queen of clubs, it means you're trying to get the wedding. If you have the wedding, for some reason it's two queens of clubs, then that means you're working together. Now, early on, someone might reveal that they're the club, and then somebody else might be like, oh, I'm going to start passing the cards, trying to win cards for that person, and then everyone else kind of go, oh, it must be them. So in my view, like any social deduction game, you want to play it later on. But then, of course, when someone else plays their queen of clubs, you now know who the people are working together and suddenly working against them. I'll talk to you about my review about this in a moment. Let's just shuffle these up. So, of course, you would normally have two decks, but I just keep it simple, and let's just do with one and see how that goes. So of course, please do share, check out the playlist for the classic, uh, obviously, other traditional card games. I will show you Seagull in a second and another game that I think supersedes it. 
And uh, yeah, let's have a go. So you're gonna deal out all your cards. Now remember, you would normally have twice the amount. So you will need two decks of cards, and ideally have them with the same back. Of course, then you do have to sort out, which doesn't take too long. So as you can see, everybody has 10 cards. So I'll talk about other things in a moment. This is what they've got. And uh, as you can see, they do not have the Queen of Clubs. So uh, they might want to lead off. The best thing to normally lead off with is something that might win you the trick because everyone else has their cards and that allows you to steal all those points. So again, going off the basis that actually aces are high, we're going to play Ace of Spades. They look at their cards. Do they have any aces? They do not. So right now, they cannot play something that's off suit, which, uh, let's double check this, That would. these are all trick cards, in fact, as you can see. They're going to try and win it with a cheap trick. So as per our information here, the cheapest trick is the 10 of hearts. We now know that they've got no spades. And now this person is leading off, or they're following. And of course, they're following off with that spade. They've got to chuck in a spade. Well, they don't know who's winning. Let's just go for a cheap two points, as opposed to, of course, four points for that king. And then this person is also following suit. They're chucking in a 10. So that's 10 points. They've got to follow suit. So suddenly this person has won them to 21 points, 31 points, 33 points. That's a lot of points. This is, uh, what, 120 points in one deck, 240 in two decks. So they've won a significant amount of points there. Now, quickly looking at these cards, we're also going to know who is the... Obviously, they have a Queen of Clubs. And over here, they do not. So, it might, oh, of course, the other Queen of Clubs is here. So, only dealt out half the deck, of course, remember? Because the other deck, in this case, is red. So, you've got to deal out everything and then be aware of it. Like I said, it, it doesn't give it away too much. But someone might say, oh, well, hang on. We now know all the pink or blue cards we've played or whatever it might be. So uh, that is the, the basis of it, but there's a little bit more to it. If you happen to have both of these Queen of Clubs, remember it's one of the highest cards in the game, as per here, there's not much that beats it. Uh, if you want to look through it, you'll notice that actually, uh, and again, this is two different versions of playing it, you can have the, uh, the various order of these cards vary too. In this case, uh, the clubs are the lowest, then the spades, then the heart, diamond, uh, hearts, then the diamonds. And yet there's another version that I've read whereby it's different. It's clubs, uh, spades, hearts, and diamonds. So different variants, lots of different variants out there. You might say, oh, hang on, that's not how I play it. So then what happens? Well, there's 120 points. So do you get 120 points? Did you get 121 points? You and your partner are going to get some points. The amount that you differ it by, so if you get it by maybe the other team managed to get 90 points or more, you might get one point, you might get two points, and then that's one round done. The next dealer, so there's four people, you're going to deal it a total of four times. You're going to see what your total score is, and maybe someone gets to 10 points. And maybe at that point you might want to call it. If not, you might want to have another round, or of course a complete round of four hands. So what do I think of the game? Well, I think, it, like I said, it's a bit complex. I'll quickly show Seagull before I talk about the review in a bit more detail. And in Seagull, which is an older game, uh, in Seagull, it's a special deck of cards with some interesting artwork. Again, please check the video for that. That came out yesterday, C-E-G-O. And of course, that's also in that playlist. You have all the trump cards, all just one universal thing, these lovely big numbers, much clearer to understand. So I don't know why they've gone complicated on this. Well, I'll bring in that final game that I think supersedes both of these games in a moment. I think it's a bit too luck-based for me. Not knowing who your partner is until someone reveals. And sometimes they say go early, sometimes go late. These people who had been playing it for 30 plus years actually had happened to not only win, but equal all of the other three people's score combined. So... Um, as much as people love it in Germany, I prefer another game, which is a Canadian game, which I can only seem to find in German in Germany with German text on it. And that's a game I've talked about a lot. It's one of my most watched videos on the channel. It's over 10,000 views. I've talked about it a lot on my top 10 of all time lists. I've talked about the various editions of uh, onto my fourth edition now or four different version. There's the Extreme Edition, there's the Jubilee, and there's the 25th Jubilee Edition, and that is the game Wizard. So that is what I would recommend you go for. Hence that bell to say, yep, yeah, please watch that instead. This is a game involving trick-taking. It has predictions, uh, which is sort of similar. You can play predictions with this. If you happen to have those two Queen of Clubs, what you can choose to do is actually say solo, in which case you are of course gonna play by yourself, or you can say nothing and say, Nothing that you've got those two queen of clubs. And what that means is you're trying to now win it by yourself. It's called a silent wedding. 
you'll get four they're worth four points each at the end of the game as well and of course if you don't win then everyone else is going to get four points as well so that's something to be aware of um, but of course if you're announcing you definitely want to be uh, be conscious of that too like i said i recommend having this handy to someone who isn't familiar with it it's it's an okay game to pick up and there's a few more things to talk about when we're talking about um, Doppelkopf, and that includes the fox. So something else is going to come back to us. There's lots of different rules. The fox. So if you happen to have the Ace of Diamonds, remember there are two, and if you have the Ace of Diamonds and then the other team win it off you, then they're going to score points, okay? And you're trying to steal your opponent's fox. So you might have foxes on both your teams. You're trying, not, you're trying to hold on to it or not lose it. Remember, it's worth 11 points, hence the name the fox, I believe is why they kind of call it that. Just remember... All diamonds are trumps. And I said, there's a lot to it. So please be aware that uh, give it a go for that first attempt and try and stick with it. Very popular game, really popular in Germany. Obviously, Doppelkopf, two heads. You're working together as a partnership. But ultimately, only one person is to be the winner. You can play for money. You can play for low money as well. And hopefully that's giving you an idea of at least understanding about the game and Doppelkopf may be ahead of you having a go at playing it. And hopefully that has been of interest. Well, thanks very much for watching. And of course, there'll be another video as soon as possible.